Hi guys, and welcome back to Fly TV. Or Thai TV. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Nicholas Bauer, and today we. To die? To die? <clears throat> Hi guys, and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Nicholas Bauer, and today we are going to Thai on our. No, it's coming to us here. To die? What is it? To die? Hi guys, and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Nicholas Bauer. And today we are going to tie a zombie brie. This is a pattern that's tied on a hook, 4 hook, with a stinger. And uh, we are going to run it with tails. This is, as you can see, with a dragon tail here. Uh, we can also push around with a wave tail. We have this fast attach in the end here, so you can kind of make this fly very, very versatile. But we're also going to be able to run these with something I've been fishing with quite a lot this fall. And it's been really, really effective when definitely if you're fishing in water that's very, very high fishing pressure. And a lot of spinning guys are using um, uh, lures and stuff like that with tails. You can actually just tie a small flashable tail on a small shank or just a normal hook that you'd cut the hook bend off. That's probably the cheapest way. And then you can just attach that in the fast attach like this. And you can have a kind of a flash tail to that fly. So it's really, really cool when you can play around with a flash tail like that. You can have like a dragon tail if you want to move that, or a wave tail if you want that fly to go as a jerk bait. So that's what we're going to tie today. So basically we're going to start out to make the rig. And uh, we're going to tie this on a 4-0. This is the Vision Big Mama hooks. They're made by Partridge. Very, very nice hook. I love the red color because it really pops out in these, in these patterns. And we're going to have the stinger. It's going to be a partridge blood intruder. This is a size one. I've actually gone down quite a lot in my patterns from a 1.0 to a size one because it actually keeps a better balance to the fly. Um, and you can actually go down to a two because you're not going to lose any fish on it. It's just going to be a light, lighter fly and it's going to have even better balance. So don't be afraid to go down to a size two if you want to. So you want that stinger to uh, uh, be one of these octopus style of hooks where the loop is facing upwards, so you can get that straight angle with the titanium wire through it. So what we're going to start is to put this in the vise. That's the advanced stuff today here. Um, and then we're going to run some titanium wire. We're going to run this uh, Bauer pike wire. It's a single strand 55 pound titanium wire. We're going to double that. So I've actually pre-cut one. This is around 25 centimeters. And the length of this is depending on how long you want your fly to be. So it's a little bit depending on how, how, how big fly you want to create. But we have to double it like that. So what we're going to start out with, we're going to put a bead on here. This is just a two, two millimeter uh, fluorescent bead. Um, you can buy them in any shop where it sells a lot of coarse fishing stuff. And then we're going to run a fast attach. And this is the size zero. It's super simple if you want to change tails in a very quick way. So we're going to start with pulling that fast attach, just like making a Bauer Pike rig. So pull that through the loop, take that bead, pull it over the ends, and slide it all the way down so it's locked and secure like that. And then we're going to attach the thread to the hook here. I'm just going to put some super glue on there, just to have a Nice, strong, solid base. <coughs> I'm tying with the Techstream Power Thread 100 denier. My opinion is just one of the best pike threads out there. Super strong, never lets you down. So we're just gonna tie that in. So we're just gonna cut that existing material off like that. Make just a solid thread base. And then we're gonna run this titanium wire through the loop here. That's why it's so important that these hooks have an up eye, because otherwise you're going to have some a stinger that's going to go in a completely different way. And then I want this bead and lock to be sticking out from the hook uh, roughly like one centimeter. So that's a good place to put it. Then we're going to wrap this quite tight here, all the way forward, all the way back again. And then all the way forward again. Put a lot of tension to the thread because that thread is basically the only thing 
that is holding this wire to the hook. We're going to whip finish that off. Like that. And we're going to cut that thread off. And now, if this fly is getting very, very chewed, and you're actually going to break this thread here, this bead and this lock is actually going to go straight into the to the hook eye here so you're not going to lose that fish but it's going to, you're going to lose eventually that stinger so if you make this really nice and strong here it's actually going to hold between 50 to 100 fish easily and then <coughs> instead of having all these white thread wraps here we're just going to color this with a red marker um, 1000 percent that the pike will not see this but it's just going to make the appearance of the fly look much much better can show you this is actually this fly I kept this white here as you can see and this one I kept it red or actually I colored it red I mean it's not a big difference but it just makes a very very nice appearance and then we're gonna cover that with super glue make sure you do this thoroughly when I, when I tie flies like this, I usually make like 10 back hooks and I put some super glue on them, let them dry, put another layer on them and then I have a whole bunch of these guys ready to, to, to be used. So here we got the stinger back to the fly here. And now we're gonna run the, the main hook. And this is a 4-0. And um, <coughs> when you're running a 4-0, uh, sometimes when you're running a little bit heavier wire this loop is not as big as you want them <coughs> because if they're going to be oversized you're going to have other issues with that hook so if you don't want to tie this on a 6-0 you want to tie it on a 4-0 and you want to get this titanium through the loop here what I do is I only run one of the titanium uh, through the hook eye instead of running two as I normally do I've played around with it a lot and so far I haven't had any fish breaking it so I'm 100% sure it's not going to be any problem. But like we do this normally, we go with both of those ends through and fold it back. But now we cannot really do that because if we do that we're going to get out of space here in the, in the hook eye. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run one of those. But we're going to start by making the rig the same way we usually do it. So we're just going to tie that in, having that hook facing towards you at a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to work this thread hole all the way up to basically like a centimeter left here. Then we're going to lift one of these guys and push it up here. Like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fold one of these on the side here not going through the hook eye and just as you can see push it down and tie it in like that and then the other one we're gonna tighten all the way to the hook eye I want that to go through bend it and tighten it as much as possible because if you don't do it this way you don't have enough clearance to go with your snap through the hook here. So small important things, but it's very important. And then we're just going to cut this existing material off here. And if you fold that, I'm just going to use this. When you fold this piece that you're not going through the loop, if you fold that in the center of the hook, you're not going to be having any problems with a very bulky head up here. So if you fold it here, this is the place where we're going to run the, the polar chenille. So it doesn't matter if we have a very bulky bottom body, body here. So fold it in the, in the center of the hook and then the other one goes through the loop. Then we're going to go all the way back again to the starting point. And then we're just going to put some glue on here just to make everything strong and secure. So now we're going to come up to how, how we're going to um, build up this body here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a bucktail collar in the back 
I'm gonna run a slightly lighter color. So I'm gonna run like a ginger or a tan, um, just to keep that color a little bit lighter. We're also gonna use that as a belly or as a cheek in the front. And then the back is going to be made out of um, a brown and a root beer color. Mix that 50-50, so it becomes a little bit darker head to the fly. Uh, we are going to try to run longer flashable on top of it and shorter on the belly and not so much flash on the belly just to get that lighter bucktail coming out in, as a belly. So basically what we're going to do that, we're going to use the uh, Magnum flashable um, in different darker colors as you can see here. We're going to run a, like a bronze, this new mixture of um, orange, black, gold. We're going to solid gold and then the matte gold and we're also going to run some lateral scale. But we're not going to run a lot of strands of each. We're just going to run like six or seven strands of each. That's all we're going to need for the whole fly. So we start out with the tail. Um, light brown or a tan, whatever you want to do here. We're just going to take a bunch of fibers from the lower part of it. Just have to find some with some nice structure. This should also contain a lot of air. We're just going to kind of pull some of these short fibers off here. And then we're going to cr tie this in straight back. So it's going to cover that whole stinger hook and bead and everything like that. So I want these tips to be covering the lock, the snap and everything like that. So it should be sticking out one to two centimeters. That's a good position to start out with. So take it in your left hand, kind of work those fibers all around the hook make a few light turns, pull on it, and then work yourself through the short fibers here so you make a strong and good base for it. So as you can see, this is now kind of covering the whole hook here, uh, getting a good support and volume for, for the flash we're gonna put on here. So I'm happy with that. We can cut this existing material off. And if you have a lot of, I can see on some of the tying courses, people are starting to cut the material here. And this, that's really simple to cut the thread. So just fold the vise, you have the thread hanging straight down, and cut it like that. So, so that's basically the tail. Now we're going to make this mixture of flashable here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to mix the whole bunch for the whole fly. Uh, in one in one batch. So we're gonna run, this is by the way the Bauer flash towers, the, the new ones, they're actually made in Sweden. Uh, we can actually give two of these away, so uh, leave a comment while you should have your flashable in order and uh, we'll send you a pair. Um, so this is Magnum flashable, we're just gonna run like I would say six or seven strands of this. Can I always take one too many here? I'm gonna use that full length, put them on the table. This is normal gold, just as a solid gold. Same amount of fibers there. Put them in the same bunch. This is a new mixture here. It's really cool with some dark in it, some orange. I'm gonna do the same there. Same amount. Push it on the table, and then some solid bronze, same there, same amount, put them on the table. So now we probably have around, I would say 50, 45, 50 fibers, and now we're going to mix these together. And the most simple way to do this is to hold them in the end like this, take your normal comb, and then just run this through the fibers like this, while twisting it between your thumb and your finger. They are very, very simple to mix at that time. So just run it together like this, and you'll be done. Then we're going to fold this up, we, because we're only going to use that half length. So we're just going to fold them up. Well, not going to lose that guy. Well, actually, we're going to use that. We're going to throw him away. So fold them up, cut it up like that, taper all those ends. So you have a nice tapered flashable in both ends. 
so you don't have a fly that looks chopped off. And then we're going to run, I actually always mix too much of this, so that's good when you tie a few of these at the same time. So we're going to run probably around 30 fibers of this, make sure that they're tapered. And we're going to run them on the top here. We're going to tie them basically 60% back, 40 to the right. So we get some kind of taper. And try to tie them in facing like 180 degrees from your side to my side. So here we go. Hold them with your left hand. Make one easy turn. A little bit of pressure on the thread. And then we'll release that. And you're going to have fibrous. 180 degrees from your side to my side. And then we're just going to take all these fibers here and we are going to fold those back. Press with your thumb a little bit so you can get a nice spread and tie it in. So as you can see now, we have material basically 180 degrees around the head here, around the tail, not the head. Just going to make a few wraps here to secure this. Some tension to the thread. And I don't want to have any flashable on the belly here because I want that to be less flashy and more of a tan belly. So we're just going to run it as it is. If you want to run some flashable there, it looks pretty cool to run just some matte gold, or actually we can do that. We'll just run, I shouldn't talk, we should do instead. So take two of those matte gold, fold it, fold it again. So you're going to go half, half, half. So that's going to basically go eight strands. Taper those a little bit so you don't have that. And then we're just going to tie those on the, on the belly on the fly. And you're actually going to create that little bit lighter, tan, not so bright belly to the fly here. Just going to tie those in like that. So, so that's basically the, the tail. You don't want that tail to be too long because you're going to run this like a dragon tail on it. And if you attach this here, you can see that it's just going to be basically these longer fibers is going to touch the tail here but then the whole tail can actually do its magic. If these fibers are too long, it's just going to tangle in the tail. So that's basically perfect. And now we're going to put a drop of glue on there. And we are going to start to body wrap this. Of course, you can leave this material out. You can just basically use thread here, but it looks much better and it gives a little bit more volume and depth to it. This is the um, Polar Reflector Flash. This is actually the color root beer. I like it because it's a little bit red, red tone to it. And uh, we're going to tie that in. As you can see with this material, you actually have kind of a tendency having these fibers pointing in one direction. And we want those to be pointing against the floor. So I'm going to tie that in there in like a short angle like that. We're going to go with the thread basically all the way so we're keeping one centimeter to the front here. We make a nice bunch of this here and then we're just going to continue wrapping it all the way to the forward to the front here. Just folding that material back the whole time. Just creating a nice body that gives it a little bit of volume but also a little bit uh, kind of a brownish shine to the body here. It's a very nice contrast to that uh, tan belly. So now we have like a centimeter still to go here. We tie that off. Put it in the bag. So we tie that off already. Gonna make a few wraps. Give it a good 
hit of glue here, so because when these flies are getting very, very chewed, this is actually the first thing that breaks, so it's, it's nice to have them attached already. So we got this um, light tan colored tail here, we got the body, and now we're going to make the, the, the cheek or the, the, the belly on the front here, and also we're going to mix the other bucktails. So what we're going to start out is to mix these two bucktails. So we're going to take like a small bunch of each. See if we can find a nice straight one with a lot of volume. So we're going to hollow tie this. So we're going to take some of the fibers from the lower part of the bucktail where it contains more air. Take some of those short fibers off. Put that on the table. We're going to do the same with the brown. A good tip if you want to have really nice bucktail and you're having a hard time finding that, get a friend who ties salmon flies because he doesn't want this part. He only wants the soft hair so then you can kind of, when he's done you can take them and when you're done you, he can take them. That's a good tip. We usually do that. That's basically the only reason you need to have salmon friends because the only fish that really counts is pike. So, Just kidding. Here we go. Put them together. Kind of roll them together like that. Hold them by the tip. Take that comb again. And then just run that through those fibers. At the same time as you twist them between your thumb and your finger. You can actually sometimes roll it again. Because you want that nice mixture. Nice blend. You're actually going to get a lot of those short fibers out too, but it's going to be a really a mess if you don't put them out, if you don't pull them out before. Created a mess in any case, so. So now we have a nice mixture of root beer and brown. Just going to make that fade going into the head very nice. So we're not going to run all of this bunch here. We're just going to take some of that away. So less is more, guys. So we're going to hollow tie this. You can actually stack it a little bit against the uh, table and get that ends to be nice and even. And then we're going to hollow tie this. So, but try to do not to spread it around the hook now, only on the top of the hook. So basically you go one, two, three, get that good pull to it. Make a few turns here, and if you have done this the right way, we basically have no fibers on the belly. That's where we're going to run the tan or ginger. So we're going to do the same thing here, some lighter color. Take all those short fibers out, and actually this. This is a problem you don't that often have with bucktail, but this is actually almost too long. So I'm going to cut this off a little bit. Because I want those fibers on the belly to be slightly shorter than on the top. So you just hold that on the, on the belly. Kind of spread it around a little bit. And then just tie it in. And make sure that that is nice and tight. Now we have created a two-toned bucktail, and that's going to be really nice touch to the fly. So we're just going to take a clamp here, hold that material away. I'm going to cut that existing material off here, because it's just going to giving you a hard time when you're going to fold this back. It's also going to create a lot of air inside the fly and make it a little bit unnecessary bulky. So there we go. So we have a two-toned head. Uh, we're going to just use a reverse tool. This is a nice tool a friend of mine made for me, but otherwise you can use just any kind of tube. You're going to lift those fibers off a little bit, put that tube there, and then gently push it over. Grab it with your left hand, and then go with your right hand and kind of push those down a little bit. So you get that right angle right away. 
you can see. So we're going to run that backwards. Try to get as many of those fibers back as possible. Now you can see we have this actually, we have this thread running straight down here and not here. So what you have to do is we have to go with the thread straight to the right and then forward. Otherwise we will grab a few fibers. It's not going to look nice. So we're just going to create a nice collar here for that as a support for the bucktail as you can see. Gonna put some glue there just to keep those thread wraps from not to falling down like that. So now we want to have that nice 45 degree angle lifting it like that. As soon as you have run them in water once, they're going to have a much more slimmer profile. But it's good that they're a little bit more bulky when you start to tie them like that. So, I'm not going to use that because we're not going to tie any more of that. So I usually take one of these hair clamps like that, so we get that all out of the way. And then we're going to run two strands of lateral scale. This is a really nice flashable. You don't use a lot of it, but it's really nice to have those silver and gold as base colors. This is a slightly wider flashable that is waffled, and it creates that really nice lateral line on the fish. So we're going to tie those. I'm just going to put it there. We're going to tie this as, as a lateral line on the fish. So we're going to tie it like 60% back, 40 to the front, flat on the side. Fold it over and repeat. That was 70, that's 60. So. And then, so that's going to create that nice lateral line. It's not going to be super visible, but if you take a fly, if you tie a fly with very dull colors or dull materials, that's going to pop a lot. So it's really a nice kind of a additional to the fly. And then we're going to use our mixture we have here. As normal is too much. So we're just going to run basically half of this uh, that we prepared. And we're just going to do exactly as we did on the tail. Uh, make sure that it's nice and tapered. And try to run this like 60-40 again here. So we're just going to make one, two turns here. Go backwards. Let that go. So m make sure that these flashable is kind of from lateral line to lateral line here. And then take this 40% that we have on the front here. Tie it in. Give it a good pressure with your thumb. And basically, oops. Make sure that this is nice and evenly spread and a nice taper to it. So that's done. Now we're just going to put a drop of glue here because this little bit wider material actually has a tendency to make the thread skid a little bit. So you can always be good with a drop of glue. So now we have a small head here. We're just going to do exactly like we did with the tail. We're just going to run two fibers of matte gold. So once again, two fibers. And then we're just going to double those. And we're going to double those again. There we go. Taper those a little bit. So you get that nice profile to it. And we're just going to tie them in on the belly. Like that, fold them over. That's going to create that little bit more matte belly to the fly. So basically we have a very simple flashable fly here, made out of a lot of wider flashable. Now we're just going to run a head of... Um, i keep this for the next fly. So now we're going to run a head of uh, ripple eyes. And this is a really cool material. Uh, it really shines in the water. Uh, you can done. You can run it in. This is peacock, and then we're actually gonna throw in a few strands of copper on there. 
So we get that really cool two-toned head. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take some of these fibers. I like to have these fibers left in the bag. So you just kind of pull some of these guys out like this. It's much more simple than trying to pull them out all at once. We're going to taper that a little bit. We're going to run it probably 60, 40. So we're going to start with the belly here. So we need to do a little bit pre-work here. It cannot be too too much taper here because then all the fibers are going to fall down to the head. So we're going to tie that in. Get a good few pulls here. Like that. We're going to go to the top of the fly. And we're going to do the same here. We're going to run peacock. Do the same. 60% to the tail, 40 to the front. So make a few good pulls there. Fold that material back. Make a few turns in front of it. Do the same here. So we take the, the tread out, run it once, two, twice. Then we're going to go a little bit more forward. So that's just create a nice Transfer to the next bunch here. We're going to grab that material. Once again, a drop of glue. I know a lot of you guys think I use a lot of glue, but I like to have a very durable fly. And then we're just going to run peacock for the rest of this. So slightly more now. We're going to use this whole bunch. We're going to go with the tread slightly further down to the hook eye. And we're just going to tie this in 50-50 now and try to get it all around the hook guy like this. A few good pulls. Take that clamp off and just try to spread those around like that. See if that, heads, that head looks good. No, it doesn't. Needs to have a little bit more material on it because you could see too much thread on the base there. So we're just going to do the same thing here, but we're just going to start from the belly instead. And we're just going to run that all the way around here. See, I'm, I'm happy with that. Not really, actually. Kind of have to work a little bit with that. A ah, few more strands on the top here. Now. Has to be good. So we're going to run that 50-50 again here. Tie that over. Give that a good pull. So I'm pretty happy with that. Took a while though. So we're just going to tighten that up. We're going to use a little bit glue on the thread here, just like a few centimeters to make a solid base. And then we're just going to take an olive marker and color the thread here because we don't want to have that thread looking all white in the front there. And then we're going to color that thread where we colored it, we're going to put some glue on there. So it's going to make a nice and tight head. And we're going to get rid of this white thread here. That is really annoying. Uh, it's still going to be annoying, I see here. I can just make one wrap with a whip finish. We're going to put glue and stuff on here, so it's going to be a very durable head in any case. But so all this fly needs now is a few eyes. So um, as you can see now, the, uh, the head is uh, fairly bulky. And you want that head to push a lot of water uh, and create that kind of tapering to the tail. So the tail is going to kick really well, depending if you're going to run a, like a dragon tail or a wave tail or whatever tail you're going to run it. It's going to create that water pressure to go strictly onto that tail and make it kick a lot. 
So now we only got to put some ice on this. So take one of these hair clamps again, push it over, and then we're gonna run some, uh, this is the fly dressing fluorescent yellow, 11 millimeters. They're really, really glowing. Um, of course you can use whatever ice you want here. We're just gonna kind of fill this gap in with some UV glue or UV resin actually, and then glue these guys on with epoxy. This is really the best way to get these eyes to be very, very durable and stay on there for a long time. So five minutes epoxy, just a small bunch. As you know, playing around with warm epoxy is much more simple than, than cold. So push it in, have the bottles standing in warm water and they will be much more simple to work with. We're gonna run um, some yellow eyes to create that really that zombie look. I have no idea how a zombie look, but looks like. But well. so we're just gonna mix that glue together. Uh, takes just takes a few seconds. When you're done with that, we're going to kind of lean the fly on its side here. And we're just gonna put some glue onto a area that is roughly just slightly smaller than the eye you're gonna put down. So kind of just work nice and easy here. Go to the other side, do the same thing on the same place. Try not to lift too many fibers off. Something like that. Just gonna clean that bobbin a little bit. And then we put these eyes. I usually try to take the eye and put it, uh, lean it against the hook eye and push it forward like that. We actually have a fiber here. It's really annoying. Like that. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So lean it against the hook guy, push it back. If you do it that way, it's usually very simple to get the eyes in the right position. So you kind of just push this a little bit so you get the epoxy down in the fibers. You take one of these hair clamps again and you just kind of push them and hold them together like that. Make sure that they are even, straight. And then you can actually take this away so you don't get those fibers too tight. So it's going to take a few minutes for that to dry. So we're just going to create a few tails. First, we're going to do um, one of these uh, flash tails here that I was talking about. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run a fast attach. This is the normal fast attach that we uh, use as the snap on the fly. We're just going to cut that small snap off so we get that loop like that, like a hook. So we're going to put that in the vise to tighten a little bit, like that. Put a drop of glue onto that small connection on the wire there. Actually, I usually run a 50 denier uh, for this, but we can run the 100 too, it doesn't really matter. Attach the thread. So this is the dragon tail in XL. It's really a cool tail, pushing a lot of water, and it swims so nice, even in, in really, really slow paste. So that's gonna be the first choice here. You can just hold it by the tip and by the end of it, and just gently pull it like that. You're gonna create that super nice swimming motion right away. Hold it with your left hand, push it over, Kind of just fold that material around that. Tie it in. Just make a bunch of whip finish knots here. And cut that thread off. And we're just gonna run a drop of super glue. So make sure that it's strong and durable. 
and that one is ready to attach to the fly like that. Very simple, strong. It's going to last longer than the tail. I push that down, and we're going to create this um, flash tails I was talking about here. Just have to find my. Mm. I'm back. So this is the expensive way to tie this in. The cheap way is to just use old hooks or something like that. But this is actually a 15 millimeter fish bind. Usually these whole these things last forever, so it doesn't matter. We're not going to tie a hundred of them. We're just going to tie a few of of each in different colors. So I'm going to use that. It's a nice and strong and durable small pin here. Just going to open this a little bit. I'm going to attach that to the vise. Drop of super glue so we get a nice thread base. There we go. And then we're just going to tighten those shanks together like that. Cut that thread off. I usually go almost past that double material here, so we just we're just gonna tie that fly on the on that last piece here. And then we are going to tie that tail. And of course you can play around with whatever color you want here. I thought I was supposed to run one in gold, but it looks like I forgot the gold here, so we're just gonna run a copper tail instead. So this is normal flashable, and that's the softest flashable that are, that are on the market today. And it's really, really good for this type of tails, in my opinion. So what we're going to run here is we're going to take a bunch. Um, basically, oh, not that small, but a bunch of that. Cut it off. And then we're going to run this full length, and we're going to run it half length. So first of it. First of all, we're going to kind of divide this into two bunches. We're going to take the long one on the table like that, the short one. We fold up, cut it up just like normal, push it together, and taper those ends. So it's nice and tapered, just like making a small, small, small pike fire here. And take those, the longer ones, do the same here taper those ends a little bit and then we're going to tie that in and I mean this is just going to be a very simple tail so you don't have to look too much of how you tie it in but you want at least you want these ends to be tapered so we're just going to tie it in 50 50 here so we just hold that with your fingers and kind of tie it in all around simple and fast we're just going to move all this material that we have on the front here. I'm just gonna move that to the back to create that tail. Go over that. Then we're gonna take those short fibers and do the same thing in front of here. Tie it in 50-50, nice and tapered. We have one fiber bugging me here, so I'll take that away. There, tie it in. Few loose turns, tighten that, fold that material back, and tie it in. And we actually created a very small fly, but it's just going to be that tail. But still, you want that to be tapered, so it's nice and tapered. We're just going to put some brown. marker onto the thread here because that that um, white thread is going to be super visible otherwise make a few turns there we go and where's my glue there's my glue so we're just going to color that we're just going to add some glue to where we have colored the thread and then just make a small nice head end it up with a finish and there we go. So, so now we have created a flash tail. It's just a super simple tail. Whoops, that you can act actually attach to every single fly you have with the um, with the snap for using a 
wiggle tail or a wave tail or a dragon tail. So you can actually create that little bit extra tail if you want to. But this one is dried already, so we're going to take that from the fly holder here. So the eyes are nice and straight as you can see. Or are they? Yeah, they're straight. Lucky me. So we're just going to push that dragon tail on here. Just going to push this back in the vise. And we are going to put some UV resin uh, in between these eyes just to fill up that gap. And it's also going to kind of wrap everything together so it looks really nice. This is the Deer Creek Diamond Fine Flex. It's really good for this purpose. So what we're going to do here is you can lean this vise slightly upwards. We're just going to fill this gap up here. Oop, not that fiber. First with one touch, so it kind of blocks the fibers or the resin to go through the fibers. And then the second layer to kind of create that nice epoxy looking feeling to it. When you're using um, UV resins like this, it's really important to have a good and powerful lamp so the resin really cures well. As you can see, it actually creates some smoke when I'm hitting the resin here because it's such a strong lamp. So that's basically the, the top of the fly. And we're just going to do exactly the same on the belly here. Going to get some of that resin into the fibers like that. Hit it with the lamp, and then we're just going to add that second coat to make it look really nice and slightly stronger. And that's it. Now we have tied the uh, zombie bream here with uh, all the extras, so you can kind of basically play around with whatever type of tail you want. We got that nice head, really strong and durable. And as you can see, that belly is a little bit more light and not so flashy. And then we have that back with a bit nice mixture of dark fibers. And then you can run whatever type of tail you want on there. Bream flies is definitely one of my favorite patterns for, for big pike. Pike feed on bream and uh, it's usually a really good pike pattern. I would love to hear your thoughts, what you think about bream flies and where you fish them and how you fish them. So please comment. And as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna give one of these sets away here. So uh, please leave a comment about that and we will pick one a winner. And uh, as always, we're gonna give this fly away. So uh, leave a comment why you should have this one. All our comments now, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, if you really enjoy fly tying and the fly dressing and what we do, Please follow us on Instagram, Fly Dressing, and uh, you will see some cool stuff in the future. Bye bye.